So when we're talking about feedback, traditionally, I would say that um, most people for, for many, many years have been doing written feedback. So if I was asked, what is the difference between written feedback and audio feedback? I think audio feedback um, can be uh, can be facilitated very much by the use of technology. Clearly, in a classroom situation, the teacher can give audio feedback um, just by just by speaking, but by uh, using digital technology to uh, record uh, spoken feedback, it means that that evidence of the feedback can be kept for as long as you want to. It can be shared. It can be um, it can be stored. It can be evidenced. Uh, the, the the student can go back and listen to that feedback as much as they want to and really think about what the feedback is that they're being given by the teacher. I, I love as well the way in which it can, can the teacher can convey different meaning in their voice through verbal feedback. So uh, with written feedback, maybe there could be a misunderstanding of what the teacher really means. But I think that uh, with audio feedback, it can be much clearer exactly what the teacher means when they're giving feedback. You can say a lot more as well in the same amount of time it would take to give them written feedback. It could be more personalized because obviously the uh, the student is used to hearing your voice as the teacher and therefore maybe the message you're trying to get across will um, will, will make more of an impact because it's the fact it's the, the teacher's voice as opposed to uh, the text, which it might be that the student only wants to see the mark. Um, and it's an interest in the written feedback with the audio feedback, the teacher, the, the student has to listen to the audio feedback. And so in my opinion, um, it's going to be more effective as a result of that. And also the great news is it's simple now to give audio feedback using digital tools. Okay, so if I was asked what is my favorite audio feedback tool at the moment, there's so many to choose from, but I think if I had to uh, say my absolute favorite, I think I'd have to say that it was the Moat Chrome extension, simply because it's very versatile. You can use it as a way of giving audio comments in Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Classroom. You can also use it as a really quick and easy way of being able to record audio in your slides presentation. So you just click on the purple button, you record your audio up to 30 seconds in the free version and three minutes in the paid version. Um, it inserts the, um, the loudspeaker icon immediately into the slide. You can right click that, you can click replace image and change it with another image of your own choice. Uh, you can also choose whether it plays automatically or whether it plays when you click on it. So I think that's fantastic. I also really like the way in which um, you can click on the, the motor icon in the Chrome extension bar. You can record your audio. Um, you can then go to where it says my activity and you can click on the share option and uh, choose the QR code option, which means you can then download that QR code and make say a praise postcard or uh, run a treasure hunt, uh, QR code treasure hunt. Um, I also like the way in which you can combine it with uh, a tool like Jamboard and make a sticky moat, which means you actually have um, audio uh, hovering over on the Jamboard as well. If you don't know how to do that, do check it out on, on the Moat uh, YouTube channel. You can add audio into Google Forms as well. And so you can have listing comprehension activities in Google Forms with uh, the Moat uh, extension. Um, so there's lots of ways in which you can use it, and that's probably why it's my favorite. Uh, from the point of view of ease of use, I'd also give a big shout out to Vocaroo, which is completely free to use and is probably one of the favorite um, tools by language teachers for audio. But if you're looking for versatility and number of options, then Moat is the way to go.